Shrimati Ann Ferrer. Shrimati Ann Ferrer, born in England. Ann Ferrer came to India and studied journalism in Mumbai. After marrying Vincent Ferrer, the couple identified Anantapuram, a chronic drought prone district in Andhra Pradesh, as their karma bhumi. Their sole intent was to serve the poorest of the poor in India. The couple set up the Rural Development Trust, RDT, in 1969. RDT's area of activities is spread over 3,291 villages in six districts of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Over 1,553 nutrition care centers provide supplementary nutrition to 30,000 children. More than 8 lakh patients availed the services of 4 hospitals and 17 health clinics during 2014-15, besides those coming under prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV project. Anne Ferrer has been providing required facilitation to the community development committees to independently manage and monitor 3,028 schools in 2,801 villages. RDT has provided bicycles to over 16,000 school girls for the continuity of education. RDT runs 17 residential centers at 9 locations where children with disabilities are provided care, shelter and nutrition. RDT also supports around 26,000 disabled men and women. RDT has set up more than 8,100 self-help groups called Women Sangams, out of which 7,444 groups are running mini-banks in 1,500 villages. RDT has constructed over 62,000 houses under the ownership of the women of these houses, along with the active participation of the community at every stage of construction. Ferrer's initiative of even the poor saving through Seva Hundi by 1 lakh families in over 2,000 villages helps in the education of orphan children nutritional support to Chenchu tribes and many other welfare needs. Anne Ferrer belongs to the rare breed of humanitarian social workers who devote their entire life for the upliftment of the poor and needy in far away lands. Good evening, dignities, my dear friends. I came to India, to Mumbai, 52 years ago. For a few years, I worked as a journalist. And in the course of an interview, I met my future husband, Vincent Ferrer. I was very much struck by his conviction that the eradication of extreme poverty was not a dream. It was not a myth, but it was a reality that we could, that could be achieved. I was motivated to accompany him to his next place of work and mission in life. The eradication of extreme poverty in a tiny corner of South India, in Anantapur, Rilasima region, Andhra Pradesh. In those years, People from the poorer communities lived in great poverty with all its terrible consequences. They had no voice of their own. Their lives were controlled by others. Mortality was very high. And worse than anything else, they had no hope. And they lived without hope and lived in a world which was very dark, where for them, change seemed impossible. People did not believe in education in those years, especially for girls. They thought education was only for better off families. The moment a girl was born, she was already considered as belonging to her future in-laws family and not even considered as their own daughter. For many years, girls were married at the ages of 11 and 12. 
Women had no income or property of their own, and everything was in the hands of men. Even myself as a woman, I could not speak directly to other women, and I had to speak through their husbands. Families struggled for one meal a day, both men and women working as agricultural laborers, and many as bonded laborers. Working with a very small group of volunteers, local volunteers, and almost without any funds, we set about the seemingly impossible task of trying to bring hope back into people's lives. And more important than that, that they themselves can be the ones to bring that change and be the leaders of their own development. My dear friends, it has never ceased to amaze me how much can be achieved with, only with great faith and determination working at the grassroot level and close with people. I have witnessed in 46 years an amazing progress in families who many years ago were shackled in poverty and ignorance. People now believe that education is one of their inalienable rights, both for boys and girls, and 100% of girls and boys are in school. Girls and boys are reaching university, getting good jobs and supporting their families, helping to pay their debts and helping the family to come out of poverty. Women are strong, individually and in their groups, having their own income and as a group acting against such social customs as early marriages, preference for boys and forced abortions. Special social action teams comprised of women and men in the villages work with us against violence against women. People now live with hope and have witnessed the change they never thought was possible. Now, thousands of these families who have received so much support during 40 years are giving back into the community, helping people poorer than themselves. Each family, more than 115,000 families, each keeps a small seva hundi, a small money box made of pot mud pottery, and especially the women and children eagerly put one or two rupees in the hundi when they have it. Every year in April, they break all their hundis. This year, when they broke their hundis, these 115,000 families, they had collected more than three and a half crores of rupees. They had collected more than three and a half crores of rupees in change. When we spoke to them in the first years, what did they want to do with these funds of theirs? They said that they wanted to help orphan children in Anantapur district for their education. And therefore, these poor families are now helping more than 700 orphan children for their education. Poor persons are supporting those who are more in need. There is nothing that is impossible, something that I have learned in these years, that we can all contribute in our own small way however small, but we can all contribute to reduce the suffering in this world. 
and help persons to come out of extreme poverty. It's a great honor for me to receive this Jamnalal Bajaj Award for work with women and children. For me, it's a recognition that extreme poverty can be eradicated, that women and children can bring, bring change to their lives. This award belongs to them, and I accept it in their name. I also congratulate all the other awardees of the Jamnal Al Bajaj Award 2015 for their inspiring work. I would like to thank the Bajaj Group and the Foundation for every year recognizing and encouraging persons who are showing us that it is possible to have a better world. Namaste, thank you very much.